On this week's episode, we go over Breakside. It's a brewery out of Portland, Oregon. And the beer is called Chocolate Brandy Alexander. I'm not going to lie when I say this. It's the best stout I've ever had. So stick around for that. We also, while drinking this, talk about the Rogue Invitational this past weekend, CrossFitting and Strongman. It was a fun episode. It's a little long. And then we had a guest uh, appearance by a random beer that I brought from Austin. Enjoy, guys. I saw y'all did a leg day today. Yes, we did. Uh, y'all added a band. Two. Oh, yeah, yeah. Two, matter of fact. <laughs> I like that on the Hack Squad, right? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, hey, guys. We're fresh off of our trip to Austin from last weekend. And uh, let's keep it weird. We're going to do a Portland, Oregon beer. Yep. Donated. Is it donated or just gifted? It's gifted to us from our, our good pal Chuck. Yeah, we did a we did a beer exchange. Yeah, you sent him a bunch of stuff, didn't you? And he sent us a bunch back. Yeah, he sent yeah, like real big boys and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, hats off to Chuck. Yeah, I'm kind of excited us. for this one. This one sounds yeah, I think phenomenal. This is our first stout, right? Review stout yes. review. We did the uh, Martin House uh, ejecto ejecto cito cuz yeah and. That's good, but now we actually have, we're going to have documentation. <laughs> um, so you want to crack it open, and yeah. I'll, I'll start digging into it. So this is a Breakside Brewery beer. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks like from every bit of the research I did, they're known for their stouts, or they, they've got a lot of stouts. Well, that's cool. Um, they do have other beer, but they have like a stout section in like a library on their thing. It just says, you can look up their beer, and then under beer it says, stouts or barrel age so these boys don't play around apparently um as far as the brewery itself uh yeah you, you want a whole glass yeah go ahead why not if it's bad i'll just you know dump it out um as far as the brewery itself portland oregon but man they got a lot of awards i was looking at their uh their website and it says awards and accolades or accolades and awards and i mean there's a list dating back to 2015. They have the breweries won awards, and they've got every beer that has won awards, like multiple awards under each of these beers. So, I mean, we might be stumbling onto the Mecca here. I don't know. <laughs> I was highly impressed by that. This band, or band, this beer is called uh, Chocolate Brandy Alexander. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see. What are we gonna? What are we looking for in this? Well, I guess I could read off the thing. To celebrate our tenth anniversary, we wanted to release a special new barrel-aged beer that commemorates this milestone in our company's history. Our barrel-aged beers have always looked to the world's food, spirits, wine for inspiration. Uh, we made this beer based on desserts, pastries, cocktails, cordials, and emery. And this special release continues the tradition. Uh, flavor profile, coca, plum, hmm, dark berries, molasses, caramelized sugar, all of which sound great to me. Yes. It was available in 2020, IBU 20, ABV 8.4. So it's not like a super strong stout or anything like that. Just looks like we're going to just dig into the normal stout. Yeah, I might just go ahead and read off because they got oh, yeah, a there bunch you go. of information yeah, inside right. of it. My, mind you, I have it here, but it's better <laughs> when it's on the bottle. <laughs> Seek and enjoy vintage 2020. Man, we're chocolate milk this week. Yeah, we're getting old. Pinky up. Barrel types are great brandy barrels. Number of casts 18 used in the blend. So, 18 different, they they use 18 different barrels to to blend this bitch up. Age in 13 months. Jesus. Yeah. So, that stuff's been sitting on a shelf. Let's see what we're getting into. It so, smells great. First, we, we grade on appearance. Now, I didn't see, because you had it pointed towards me. I was reading it. Uh, the, the bottle is not very flashy. Yeah, it's it's very plain. Yeah. 
But then when you started reading and you put it back down here, we got to seek and enjoy on the side with all of the fucking everything that it needs to talk about. It's boosting the score. I was going to give it a five out of the gate. <laughs> they got all that. I got to give it an eight on the appearance. They they came back from yeah, like a really the, shitty grade on that. But if, if you looked at the label, I mean, it's a chocolate chocolate stout. So the label itself for the the labeling on the bottle is a chocolate sticker. Yeah. So I am smelling the plum or like a like a fruit to it. Yeah, a fruit. fruot. Mm-hmm. Yep. Obviously, the chocolate's you, coming out swinging hard. Definitely getting the chocolate out of it. I'm a huge fan of milk stouts, too. Mm-hmm. There's stouts and the milk stouts. I like the milk stouts. It's like the Bud Light compared to Budweiser, I guess. I don't know. It's just a lighter, creamier, usually. I really enjoy stouts. Yes, you do. You and our buddy Otis. Ooh. And I will tell you that... This is good and easy. Yes. Yeah, that's a good stout. That's like an all-day stout. <laughs> yeah. I think putting I think stouts we I I send Otis, a buddy of ours, like pictures of stouts that are like 13%, 12% cuz he likes those strong ones. Mm-hmm. It's too much for me. I'll have it, I'll taste it. I want to taste it. Right. But don't give me the whole bottle. <laughs> yeah. This being in an 8.4 Makes this an all-day drinking stout to me. Yeah. I can drink this whole damn bottle. Yeah. Most of the time, I'm like, ooh, that's a little too much. You know, it's too rich. Killing it. I I, I feel pretty safe to say that this is a very good that's, beer. Because normally when we go get our three. Yeah. I like, I'll try to do one stout and two others. Yeah. I can't ever remember going get three and they all be three stouts. Because like you say, for one... Too much alcohol, and, and second of all, I don't know if I could drink three of them some bitches. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. But that, that's easy and good. <laughs> We're not even into the grading, and I'm already thinking these dudes are about to just kill this damn thing. This is phenomenal. I, I, I never read reviews, ever, because I, I want you and I to kind of organically grade it in our weird-ass little scale. But I read some reviews on this one because I knew it was our first stout, and mm-hmm. I, I'm not as versed on stouts as I am on IPAs. But I ah, fuck, I've had a ton of stouts, um, so I was like, let me see kind of the direction that people are grading these. And there was a very mixed bag of nuts with the grading, uh, like you know, three point four out of five to like a four point eight out of five. Mm-hmm. I think some people fucked up. This is really good. So, and also some people could not like stouts. That's true. Then don't fucking grade them. At least you and I have like a, you know, a scale of, you know, I pull the bias out of me not liking beer, uh, right. certain types of beer. Correct. And just grade it for what it is. But man, some people are just so immature. <laughs> All right, let's get into a topic. Oh, well, let's just talk about the taste real quick. No, oh, we'll go into a topic and we'll talk taste. Okay. Uh, this week or this past weekend, we went to the Rogue Invitational. Mm-hmm. You have to be invited to go to this, not the crowd, not the you and I. competitors. Well, yes, we were invited by Rogue <laughs> to go sit in the crowd at this. But no, as a competitor, you have to be invited. Correct. So you're already seeing the top of the top. Mm-hmm. This isn't just top athletes. This is the cream of the crop it's sponsored by Rogue athletes. Not all of them are sponsored yeah, by Rogue. Yeah, but you get but what I mean. Yeah, like yeah. These, these dudes are... If they're there, they're they might even be be they're being looked at possibly to be sponsored. I'm guessing as well. Um, Not only are they top athletes, but I think they are might be ambassadors of the sport. Yeah, and also very popular within the sport. Yeah, so good on Instagram and YouTube. Yeah, rogue, um, rogue ain't dumb. Yeah, <laughs> um, I went there. I think we said it in, in the one of our last episodes that I was going there for the strongman. I've seen enough CrossFit. Doesn't mean I'm not going to watch it and that I don't respect it and I'm going to thoroughly enjoy it. Mm-hmm. But I went there for the strongman. Oh, yeah. There's something about seeing 400 pound plus humans or give or take 300 and up plus humans do things that people just don't do. Yeah, normal people just can't fathom the stuff that those that people do. That wheel of pain 
for those that don't know, the twenty thousand pound. Twenty, I think it's twenty two thousand pound. It's this thing that has like uh, what eight or ten things coming off of it. Yeah. Imagine what a twenty four, twenty five foot structure of logs with rolling things underneath it, and you just have to push it. Now they put like a flooring on it, which mm-hmm. is good because if it was, they records, wouldn't be able to move it in the grass. Yeah, or right. if they could. I think that it would just be a less distance, which, Correct. you know, who cares? It just wouldn't be as entertaining, but, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I liked about the flooring on it is that every time that they bring this out, they're going to have the same distance, probably. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a more even playing field. That way, record's broken on it. Like, oh, somebody made it a complete turn. Probably is going to be more accurate. Then one time this thing's in the sand, and the next yeah. time it's on yeah. concrete, you know. It's on this it platform. It levels a playing field for every time they use it. So the goal from what I gathered while we were there is they wanted to make it all the way around. Now, nobody did. One guy came very close to making it all the way around, pushing this thing in a complete circle. Um, so hats off to that guy. But when they would reset it, <laughs> like five to ten dudes would come out to push this damn thing. Five normal-sized human beings. No, they were some big son of a yeah. bitches pushing it back. Oh, that powerlifting team? Yeah, it was kind of like a yeah, like a powerlifting team. Yeah. So bigger than I was, mm-hmm. which got us talking. You know, like, I wonder how far I could push it by myself. I have no clue. Dude, I, I, I would have paid 50 bucks. Just to try it? Just to, like, let me down there to try it. They could have sold that. They yeah. honestly could have sold that. To give people more respect for what these humans were doing out there, I wish that we could have paid to go down there and push that damn thing. Because I would have. And they could have made a quick dollar off my ass. But I just wanted to see if I could move it. Like, just how heavy is this thing to push? Huge structure. I don't know if we would have moved it. I think I think I could have moved it a foot. Yeah. That's what I'm going to go with. I got a foot <laughs> in me. Just a running start with a truck and some caffeine in me. I could have moved it a foot. Now, that wasn't the only event there. Uh you saw the deadlift. I I, I was work, I worked a half day and then rushed up there. How was that? I know what it is, but for people watching that couldn't make it to the event, how, how was that? So they used the uh, rogue elephant ball once again. It's a big ass bar. Yeah, and I believe uh, I think they started out at around seven hundred <laughs> opening. You know. <laughs> Big Shaw didn't make his way out there until I believe like 880. And Big Shaw, for those that don't know who Brian Shaw is, he's the big boy from the United States. Yeah. He looks like an action figure. 6'8, like 430 to 440 or something. He I looks mean. like a goofy, just man. Not in a goofy of like, it looks like if they took you, you got big biceps, you got big shoulders. And and just hooked up an air nozzle to your ass and started pumping you up. Just it's sweat. like a perfect structure. <laughs> like he doesn't look fat or anything. Yeah, he's just he a big like, dude. Like a bodybuilder, but massive. Not like a bodybuilder. But you but get what I mean. A, but yeah, he's he, a big he's dude. He's got yeah. big shoulders that are cut. Yeah. He's got arms that are cut. Yeah. He's more of cut than the rest of the guys. A lot of those guys are just big. Doesn't mean that they not a the nose bleeder. Yeah. He was out there in a tank top. Yeah. Well, who was the one dude that came out with no shirt on? Oh, that's the one who won a deadlift. He, yeah. he pulled like 928. What kind of softball-sized hernia was coming out of his belly button? It looked like an alien movie getting ready to that's happen. What, that's what I told Chris Hilton. I said, just, that's what I'm going to look like. Big yeah. old belly. He had, no, it was bigger than that. I could see it from the back, dude. Dude, he They're turned like sideways. Fist. He turned sideways. That thing was poking. You could go up there and just pluck that bitch. Oh, yeah. Nah, he would probably be mad at it you. Like but a you second could, brain just yeah, rubbing you could, it. Yeah, you could pluck it and run away, but... Yeah, Big Hernia, he's the one that won the okay. deadlift. And I saw it. Well, I'll let you say it. And he, after he won that event, they were talking to him, and he's like, yeah, he said, I pulled not, uh, 100 pounds more than I did last year. And last year I was second. He said, I won it this year. He said, I got, he said, I got at least 100 pounds left in the tank. It looked like he could have pulled that for three, four, five, easily. He got that off the floor. Like a joke. Very easy. Like a joke. Yes. Like I would pull 225. Like, Dude, I want to say he opened, I don't know, close to 900. And it. Yeah. Dude, it looked like a warm up. Yeah. Like a warm up. Then. The video I saw of him pulling it, because I really wanted to make it to that event. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but just couldn't. The video I saw him pulling it just looked like people weight. Man, dude, yeah. it a, like it's crazy. I wish somebody could have pushed him. Which brings me into this: it sucked that a lot of those guys were banged up. Yeah. I get it. I don't know the shelf life of these strongmen. There's some older strongmen like Shaw's what in his thirties, right? I think he's like in his mid thirties. He's yeah. been doing it. For There's a some while people have been doing it for a while. He's been doing it ever since he finished college. What the? Well, I was listening to Rogan. He had the world's strongest guy. Was it Rob? Rob Kearney. Kearney, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like 28. So yeah, he's, he's he, and he's considered young in yeah. the sport. The other guy, the other Russian with the with the beard. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, he looks that young. shaves his. I think he was the youngest competitor at 26. And he was moving. Yeah. And imagine, yeah, 26 that strong. Yeah, you know he's it's only not gonna like, get. Yeah, it's not like you're mad at life that life don't beat you down, so you nah. got that old man strength. He's 26 years old and strong as fuck. And he's got a lot of years of steroid usage coming his way to get just bigger and bigger. <laughs> They're but all the, juicing. They gotta be. The Russian, the special forces guy. Yeah, Mister Nosebleed himself. Just oops. He came out there in a tank top. Uh huh. He is jacked. Oh God. Yeah, because you always Just, see him in like a rogue black t shirt. And along whenever yeah. he came out there, that's what me and Chris Cynthia was saying. Like, man, he's a lot more jacked than I remember. Yeah. And that's what Chris Cynthia pointed out. She says, We never seen him in a tank top. No. I'm talking big old caps, vascular, them big old arms. I mean, yeah. he's a strong man. They They're all, all got specimen, a specimen, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they all got a gut, but dude, he ain't sitting there in a tank top. Well, Rob Swole. on that thing said that they all probably have the gut because they like a, they like their cheap meals just like everybody mm-hmm. else. So mm-hmm. he said that's why a lot of them got that gut. Because first off, they eat a lot, but they perform a lot. Yeah. So you, I guess you would find that even kind yeah. of like how much food you need to eat to perform. But he says they all like their cheap meals too. Yeah. Mass moves mass. I yeah. mean, but I, I mean, I forgot the uh, the very popular. He might be from Lithuania or something. He competes in a strongman all the time. I forgot his name, but. When it's not strong man season, mm-hmm. he drops weight and his, oh, wow. his belly is flat. But yeah. I mean, he says he he got to size up to Bella move the weights that the, all these guys do in the competition they have. I mean, yeah. they have to be big ass human beings. Well, like a squat thing wouldn't necessarily. I don't know. Like, there's probably a happy medium. But when like the first event we were talking about the uh, the push the mm-hmm. wheel of death, if you don't weigh anything, yeah, if you're only two hundred pounds, you ain't pushing it, right? Just leaning 400 pounds forward, yeah. even if it's a gut, is going to be, you know, it's going to give it's you a little bit more momentum. momentum yeah. Right. Um, but, yeah, I, those boys are huge. And seeing that old boy come out of nowhere, I was sitting there with John Boy. We were, <laughs> you, he came out of nowhere with his shirt off, and it was like, that is a big son of a bitch. It, it looked like. Diesel from, like, here up, yeah. he looked like he puts in the bench. He just, just got this big ass gut. Traps from his from his ears to his shoulder, just no neck, just huge as fuck, just wilding out there on that field because yeah. of that belly. But them them guys are just ridiculous, man. If you guys at home watching this or wherever you're at haven't gotten into strongman and you're <laughs> into sports and lifting, you're crazy. It's the I think it's probably my favorite thing now to mm-hmm. be into. Um, you know, cause I don't watch football. I don't watch bat. I don't watch sports. This is, it's just incredible seeing these human beings out there. Yeah. Um, do you want to do a sponsor? Yeah, we'll go over the sponsor. I got a, we got a long one here, I think. Cause, uh, there's a lot to talk about. Today is sponsor brought to you by Pringles. Woo. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Pringles has sent us a tube of chips today. We got the ranch. Have you ever had that ranch? I have. Have you? And I'm not complaining that it's a no. redo. The mustache man knows how to bring the heat when it comes to the chips. Ice ranch chip. The one thing Pringles does is they do the simple things really well. Mm-hmm. Very well. Jalapeno chip, it's kind of a basic chip. They knock it out. Ranch chip, kind of a basic chip. Knock it out. Even their original, just, just enough. Yeah. Just enough of the flavor to give it that flavor that they have on the tube. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. Nothing overpowering. All right. I guess we can go over the taste, and then we'll go back into some more of the uh, the event we were at. Once again, the smell is incredible. Actually, okay. I have a – I put eight, but I think I'm going to change my number. Um, I'm interested to see what you think. And how does it smell to you on a grading scale of one to ten? 
What? You're getting a brandy smell what out of this. You're getting chocolate. Yeah. You're getting a fruit. That's high up there. Yes, because it I'm is. smelling everything that it says on that bottle. Everything. Yeah. For once, it's not like one of those wines where you, it's like you'll taste this, 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 and this, and I'm like, I don't taste any of that shit. Yeah. They should market this as like really means what it says, you know. For people like us that are basic, I've got a number. What's your number? I had eight, but I think I'm going to change it. I'm going to give that a nine, nine point two. So we always round up. You said nine point two. We're, I think our first stout's going to go ten. I was going to give it a nine to it, like yeah, like that, like a nine point five or something. We're going ten with it. That is a great smelling beer. Mm -hmm. uh, taste wise, out of thirty, I've had a lot of stouts. Like I said, this is this might be the best stout I've ever had, and I've had a lot of really good stouts. And it is easy to drink. That's the it's bonus. Not, it's not bitter whatsoever because we've had some stouts that are actually bitter. I think that's because it's a milk. The stout. milk stout. We're learning on the go here. I'm talking mm -hmm. out of my ass. I think that's because it's a milk stout, which is probably why I like milk stouts so much more. It could be oatmeal milk stouts and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is deadened down that bitterness. Like sometimes that bitterness, I like it in an IPA, mm -hmm. but when I'm drinking a stout, I, I I don't know. I feel like either I want that coffee, or I want that. That chocolate. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. And yesterday I had that pumpkin scout. I saw that. Yeah. I saw the picture. That it was good. like nothing like this. I'm, I'm, I hesitate. Go to, with a 25. 25? I was going to go higher than that. I'm fine with a 25. If you want to go higher, I'm good with that. Cause Let's say, that, look, I think I, I was going to give it a 29 because it's the best stout I've ever had. There you go. But you say 25. I tend to be a little more generous. I think it's because I'm a happy guy. This so we'll is, go we'll go 28. Sheet. It's our sheet. I just happened to write on it. We'll go 28. We'll split the difference and round up the one. Aftertaste wise. Now that we've got some ranch flavoring going on, we've already established that this thing smells heavenly, tastes great. The appearance of the bottle is an eight out of ten. <laughs> What else do we have positive to say about this? Are you just riding in nuts on this one? I thought I was going <laughs> to blast this one, to be honest. When I read the reviews, I was like, I'm a, I, I, I'm a little bit hesitant because I'm going to, I'm always going to tag the beer drink, the brewery that we uh -huh. do, even if it's bad. I just told myself, like, pull the Band-Aid off and do it. So I kind of had in my mind I was going to blast this, but I'm not being full of shit here when I say this. This is a good stout. I'm not a big stout drinker. I just learned to drink them because I had to at the Saucer, a uh, local beer place we go to. And so for me to be blown away by this just means how good it is. I, mm -hmm. I don't know an avid – you're an avid stout drinker. I'd be interested to see what Otis said about it because he like he goes looking for stouts. Yeah. Um, but you drink more stouts than I do, and you think it's pretty good. That's a, so. that's a really good one. Aftertaste. The taste fades relatively quick, mm -hmm. but that chocolate sticks with it to the end. It does. I'm getting exactly what you said. Yeah. What do you think out of 20? 14. 14. Okay. And is that because it doesn't linger that much? Okay. Yeah. Drink a Well, we'll do drinkability last. I want to talk about a few more things here before we get done. Um, one more thing about the competition. What do you think about the CrossFitting portion of it? Being that you've done, not, you did I'm CrossFit huge, for what, two years? Yeah. Two years? Okay. I'm not a huge fan. Yeah. But to see those caliber of people and what they could do, even with the, the legends, mm -hmm. I was more happy to see the legends. Yeah. I was going to bring that up. But still, those young kids, like that young girl, Haley and all that, competing with... Of course, she goes to the games and competing with Toomey and all them, but to see people in their mid-20s. You know that one girl out there, 17, right? Yeah, that little Jack. Yeah, that's a... That kid does not it, look 17. I wish I was she, as swole as she was at oh, 17 years. Oh, something. Oh, it's not O'Malley. 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 O'Mallory? Something like, I don't know. Yeah. Sorry if we've forgotten your name. If if I saw that girl walking down the hallway she in high like school... She looked like a grown-ass woman. Yeah. <laughs> 
But she's she does look young. She oh, does and, look and young. In her face, she's young yeah. as shit. But, but her body. It looks yeah. like she's been working out for 10, 15 years. Yeah. Like just came out of the womb, just pumping curls yeah. out. Some people just I had a my best friend growing up, he was that way. Yeah. Just you give him a little bit of weight, and it was just like everything just, whoa, 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 you know. And 17 fill years out. old, yeah. she got round shoulders. Going to the games already. Biceps. She's been, she's. Six pack. Yeah. I mean, 17 years I old. I hesitate to say six. <laughs> I'd lean more to nine, ten Yeah, she got pack. the eight pack, yeah. Yeah, there's like a couple of extra ones just floating around in there. But to see those people do what they did, just like that Brazilian kid mm-hmm. with the Olympic lift and that kid strong as hell. Yeah. It's and a joke to him. Yeah. He, he, he I, stopped. He stopped because yeah, he didn't have to do the last lift because I give some respect to that dude. Cause he likes to put on a show and I know Dave Castro, the guy that programs, uh, like the games events mm-hmm. and the opens events. Uh, he wants those athletes. Like he knows that they have to be somewhat, um, conservative cause that's not the only workout. I right. mean, they got a weekend where the shit, but he also wants a show. Mm-hmm. Um, that guy, I want to say it was at the games. It may have been regionals. I think it, man, I don't, I don't know. I may be talking out of hat here. Um, but he, they did a snatch ladder and it went up, 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 up. Well, the last snatch was something pretty fucking heavy. And, as, and most people were like either not finishing it or it was like doing one waiting two, three minutes and then doing it again. And then they would finish this dude touching go it. Like, did the snatch easy, went up, touch and go, clank. He missed it, but it wasn't on a strength. It was just like it fell Technique. a little forward in the catch. Yeah. I think he got a little too cocky and, like, didn't – it didn't quite get the technique, you know, through. Mm-hmm. But then he just picked it right back up and did it. Yeah. And that just showed how much stronger he is than the rest of the field. Um, yeah, that kid is strong as hell. And the cardio to at least keep up with the – you know, the guys on the cardio aspect, too. Yeah. I mean, that's impressive. Um, the thing, like you said, I took away, it was really good for me to see the uh, legends compete. Yeah. Because I started CrossFit in 2009, which I'm not the oldest G in CrossFit, but that does make me pretty goddamn OG. Yeah. Like, there was three CrossFit gyms, or maybe two in the city of Houston, when I moved back from Arizona looking for one. They weren't, it wasn't like on every corner that it is now. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's kind of watered down now with all the bullshit programming, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was so good to see the people that I start, like when I first looked it up, I looked, I found it on YouTube, you know, mm-hmm. like I saw, um, Oldroid and, uh, the other girl from Canada, my brain's not working. Uh, she now lives in the, uh, Colorado with her husband, but, uh, Camille LeBlanc Bazinet. They were going at it against each other. And I kind of had plateaued in the workout regimen that I was doing. I just started kind of getting into fitness. Mm -hmm. And I saw that and I was like, that's the next step in my fitness. You know, I want to be able to run. I want to be able to also lift heavy. I want to be able to do those things. So I immediately next day found a CrossFit gym in Tucson, drove over there and started. And seeing those athletes that were down on that floor were all the ones from that, those decades. Yeah. Uh, it, it was like, I remember I was sitting there, we went to the road tent or building, whatever that was. And some of those old guys were in there. And I, was, I remember telling you like, Oh, that guy and that guy, it was just a good history thing yeah. for me. Uh, went there to see the strong man, but also I was very excited about seeing even your damn Bailey Froning, even competing. He's still, com- he's not retired. All the other guys I think are pretty much retired. Yeah. He's but, the only um, one that's still active, but yeah, he's competing still but in team yeah that but seeing him out there w- was was kind of cool yeah um and i like that they did it partner style so yeah. they realized it looked I, like the luck of the draw yeah you know, and no they one. did they mixed up every event was yeah. they mix and match guy and girl yeah uh you know older and younger they did it just changed yeah. every event yeah. which i thought is a very good way to do the legend thing yeah and it, they it, just out there to compete yeah and have fun i think it pulls a lot of the competition aspect out of it which allows them just to just do the work now and they're competitive because yeah. froning even said he's like oh we came out there to win you know him and miko or whatever yeah. in that one um but I think it takes a little bit of the pressure and allows them to just kind of like take in the moment. Yeah. I think they, Rogue has done a very good job with that Legend series. Because whenever um, we ran into Margot Alvarez, and uh-huh. I had still looking him, jacked. Yeah. 
bought a case of wine from and all that, but I asked her. Did you get it? Well, of course. Did she deliver it like out of the back of a pickup truck? Yes, she did. That's so fucking cool. Yes, I was there for the conversation. And I was like, I feel like I'm watching a drug deal, but it was like straight just wine deal. Yep. It was great. Just straight up. Did it come in a crate? No, it's come in a box. Man, that's kind of lame. It would have been better if it was like <laughs> moonshine crate. Like you could kind of hear the bottles clacking around in the back of her truck a little bit. I believe on the ride home, I might have heard some bottles swishing around back there. But who was in your back seat? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> yeah, just hiding back there drinking. But yeah, they, she met us, delivered it. I mean, the she door, was very friendly about yes, that too. Their customer service is phenomenal. So what's the name of her? We can nobody's the watching wine. this shit. I the mean, goat wine. So it's the goat wine. Mm-hmm. Excellent customer service. Mm-hmm. Good wine. We had two two of them Sunday night when we got home. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. We so it is actually good. I, yeah. I don't want to hate on her or anything. No, like, it's, it yeah. was good wine. And You see a phenomenal athlete just all of a sudden come out of nowhere with wine, and you're like, <laughs> what are we getting in here? But she's in Vegas and seems to be getting her wine into places. So, I mean, yeah. you can't taste bad at that point. Yeah. But, uh, but she is a pretty face. So it's like, how, how much of the Instagram beauty hustle is right. it and – actual taste but yeah. you say it's good and you're an avid wine drinker so it's I'll good take and she also asked her you know is she having fun she's like whenever rogue asked you to do the invitational she said you always come do it she said i couldn't yeah. pass this up she said i'm just out here to have fun so yeah that's the mindset of the the legends they they all got invited and they just having fun we're 31 minutes in this this is probably going to go 40 minutes long it's going to be a long one so i apologize to anybody that has to pee hit pause keep going uh, let's, let's do drinkability. Mm-hmm. I have a surprise beer here. So that's why I want to, I don't want to rush it, but I kind of, we need to okay. on, the, on the fact of time drinkability wise, we do it out of a six pack, but we've never done a stout. So how are we going to do this on the fly? How are we going to rate, um, drinking a stout? I, off the top of my head, I think, um, stouts aren't made to, to drink a ton. Well, some people do, but I think I have ton. an idea. Okay. Would you drink two of these? Yes. Being that big. Yes. yes. So that's a 30. Okay. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Multiple. So let's just say these are 15 points each. That's the highest drinkability stout I've ever had. Give I'm it a going 30. 30 out of 30. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm, I'm very, very impressed. I'm not trying to hold these guys penises, yes, but you you're trying I'm, to hold it. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm really blown away by this fucking stout absolute monster of a of a beer because you taste the chocolate in every sip yeah but not it's just also the smell. not not just the smell you taste the chocolate and it's not overpowering yeah it's and it's also not overly boozy to where it's like you're just drinking straight right. alcohol it's like all right um let me do some addition here but let me tell you something about austin mm-hmm they better start paying motherfuckers to get rid of these goddamn bums. <laughs> You're getting into a whole other topic. <laughs> you were downtown, and I stayed in Round Rock, so I didn't have to deal with any of that. Last commotion. time I went to Austin, I said I'm never going back. Uh huh. This time, I think I really mean it. But see, you I don't understand why y'all stayed downtown. The first, because John Boy was getting our tickets, and he was like, "Let's stay downtown." I was like, "No, dude. Like, we're staying in Round Rock. That's the play." So did like stay. W- we were five minutes from the event, which is where we were going to be spending mm-hmm. most of our time. And then we were like, literally, the, our hotel. We could have walked to the Twin Peaks down the road. It, it was it's just. It was multiple couples. It was my I wife. Think y'all made a rookie mistake. No, that was my wife's birthday. They oh. wanted to go eat at. Did y'all go places. do certain things at least? Because I know y'all went to work we out and eat. Then. We went to Gold's Gym every morning, and that at, I was a little jealous we about. Went, we went. Uh, Eat somewhere every night. That I was a little jealous about. Because if we had stayed in Round Rock, we'd have had a drive. They got really good restaurants in Round Rock, though. I don't think y'all y'all realize the the fucking awesomeness of Round Rock. Fucking Eddie V's was on the next block. <laughs> we walked around the block, and there's hey, Eddie V's. There was a there was a Wendy's <laughs> right down the street from where John Boy and I were staying. Um, so this scored a ninety, which our highest scoring beer, I believe, is a ninety two. Ladies and gentlemen, make it this far into this 33, 52 minute point, go buy this fucking stout. Mm-hmm. Or have Chuck, meet Chuck, yeah. 
and and uh, have him mail it to you. Best style I've ever had by far. Just and that's not message, a bullshit. Just message Chuck's Bagnato. Yeah, Chuck Badass. <laughs> All right. So, oh yeah, yeah, here we go. So while Chucky bags. while we were up in Austin, I went to their local pizza area. I believe this was a brand new one. For those that have been to the Austin area, oh my goodness. Um, they have a place called Pint House. It's pizzas, mm -hmm. but they also brew their own beer. I bring this gift to you. <laughs> it's an IPA. It's got all the information on it, so the can's automatic. We're not going to grade it, but we'll this, let's let's crack this thing open real quick. Let them let them know on the way out what we thought about it, and uh, that'll be it. I tell you what, this is a good looking can. It's a great looking can. That is a good looking can. It's got the percentage on the side and everything. Yep. A high percentage for IP. Is it a double? I think so. So props to Pint House. Showed up. Two. Brand new one out in Round Rock, I believe. It was Halloween, so everybody behind the counter was dressed up. Even like you could tell they had people that were uh, the regulars there. Uh -huh. They had already shown up. And they were uh, already dressing up. They were dressed up, which I love that because that means the feel of that building is just like accepting to like, let's just have a good fucking time. Mm -hmm. But I was drinking one beer and the bartender, he looks at me, he goes, hey, man, this one's pouring good. I normally don't really tell people to drink a beer, but people are saying this one's really pouring really well today. You should you should try it. And I was like, OK, well, I'll take it. You know, usually I just do sight unseen. I don't need to taste it. He brought me and John Boy a taster anyways. I was like, yeah, dude, just just bring it. And it was this beer. It, it was, was really good. Was this the good. picture of the beer you sent me? Uh, no, that was actually the first one I was drinking. This is the one that he suggested. Okay. But I have a couple more cans, so if we need to do a review on it. 8.2 from the Pint House. I don't see anywhere where it says, but it, I'm, I'm guessing it's just a, a... So they have three locations, I believe. It's a pizza joint, and they brew their own beer. That one... Kind of like BJ's. Yes, but way better. These guys win a ton of awards. Like, I got on their site. They win awards. I think this one was limited to that location. Now, I am talking out of my ass again. Um, and it's a seasonal. So, it was a rare, rare. And I you could only get in a four-pack. So, I this I smells like, fuck good. it. This smells good. It's fucking real good. I think we're going to have to review it. I think we will. Because I've got two more sitting at home. I gave one to the boss. And then uh, here we are. That's after a stout, too. So if it's shining after a stout, that's a pretty fucking good beer. These are award winners. I mean, and you can get a really fucking good pizza, dude. Their pizza is one of the best pizzas I've ever had. This some bitch is smooth. It's very smooth. It's very good. I'm telling you, every beer, they make, for those that are in the Texas area, the Austin area, they make an IPA called the Jellyfish. Super popular. Like it's an underground kind of popular beer and this is another one you could them. drink this no problem it, it don't Zero even taste problem. like it has carbonation it to it doesn't taste like it's eight percent that's for sure no it's good jesus christ well do we have anything else we got to do an episode right after this for the next week so i don't want to use all of our stuff but uh, uh oh i will say this tomorrow if y'all are or, uh monday we do metal monday every week mm -hmm. i do yeah you do i get on there and i post one mm -hmm. on our store tomorrow or sundays Bringing a fire. I do Rap Tuesdays. There you go. <laughs> Follow Bud's page for Rap Tuesdays. Um, but this week, we're I'm coming out swinging. Yeah. One of my favorite metal bands came out with a new album, and, I, and one of the songs on that album is fucking... Was that as the... As the kids say, it's fire. Was that the band you went watch? No. I'll oh. talk about that. On, I was going to talk about it on this episode. I even wore the shirt. Shout out to Angels and Airwaves. Uh, first concert during the uh, so-called pandemic we're having. Um, Man, that's my yeah. I'll talk about it on the next. Good. One. Yeah. Anything you want to get out? No. Let's no. end it. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Great beer, right? <laughs> I lucked out, man. I, I stumbled upon a jewel just going to get lunch before we left Austin. Hats off to Pint House, just bringing the heat and Breakside, killing it. <laughs>